I don't think it's a coincidence, guys, that Mike Vrabel all of a sudden is having some game day on the field duties with the Browns, especially at road games when, for the record, and I know this for a fact, he had not been on the sideline for any road game prior to yesterday. I don't think that's a coincidence. Now, Mike Vrabel, just like Ben Johnson, will be an extremely hot commodity on the open market for head coaches this summer. He's already been linked to the Raiders. And by the way, one of his best friends, Tom Brady, is a part-time owner of the Las Vegas Raiders. And Mark Davis hasn't been a terrific owner, but he's shown the propensity, just like Jimmy, to spend to get a guy he wants in as head coach. And they just re-signed Antonio Pierce as the head coach after being the interim last year. Would they be willing to make a change now that Tom Brady has a say in the organization? Maybe. I saw a report that said Mike Vrabel is the Saints' preferred choice to be the head coach if they don't sign Darren Rizzi. Ohio State could be in the market for Mike Vrabel. Gee, I don't know if you get the same sense, but I feel like the Browns are almost unveiling the curtains and opening up all the shades to Mike Vrabel to say, here's what could be yours if you want it. And you're going to get a first row, first hand view at what this situation is. So when the situation does arise that we're going to make you an offer, you know exactly what you're getting into. Because if that's not the case, I don't know why he's on the sideline right now. So listen, it, it, it just makes too much sense. Like, you know, when you're doing a ne negotiation, right? Very rarely do you get an inside view of what the problem is. Because, by the way, when there's a vacancy, that means somebody didn't perform. Yep. <laughs> so if, if, if they was balling, there wouldn't be vacancies in business. So think about it like this. He's been there as a fly on the wall or a consultant. He knows the team. He knows the personnel. He knows Jim Schwartz. And most importantly, he can go to Jim, Jimmy Haslam and say, this is X, Y, and Z. I feel that we performed the way, and this is the problem because I was there. It's very rare that you have that opportunity. Number two, you always strike when the iron is hot. He has all the leverage. He's already been there. He can give you an answer with, in, in a, in a five-point project to tell you exactly what it is. The players are already used to him. They already have seen him on the field. He has relationships with all of them. So it just makes sense that he's the guy next in line to get the job. Now, Mike Vrabel needs to do one thing very well, and that's something I never thought Kevin Stefanski had the opportunity to do because he was a first-time head coach. You knew all you needed to know when it took Jimmy Haslam that long to give him an extension after the, after the season he had, the writing was already on the wall. Like you, you, you lock a guy up after the season. Like, Oh, listen, we got to get you together. Never really happened. We tried to get the details of it. Never really came out. Not only that, he made you get rid of most of your staff after a year, you went to the playoffs. I think Mike Vrabel starts off at a different position and a different point because He's already had a track record. They know he already got an offer. He might have offered Ohio State and he can get one anywhere else. He's been in the building. And when he gets that offer, he's going to tell Jimmy Haslam. And if he's smart, he would do it. It's my show. I need All it right. in writing. I control X, Y, Z in writing. That's how it's moving. And the first thing that needs to go is I know all I need to know about football. And that dude over there, the baseball guy that never won with the A's, he can hang out with you, not me. How, how so remember when you know Kevin Stefanski pretty much said you know he was the the front runner on bringing Mike Vrabel into the organization that he made his hire and then you know, I think Mike Vrabel you know he's present during the week he's on the road or he's at home for home games on the road whatever and to your point Mike like when that man popped up on the sideline on a road game and then you you couple that with the fact that Kevin Stefanski looked and sounded the way he did during that that post game interview it's almost like man who's who my replacement is almost here scouting while I'm here in the building you know what i mean and for mike Vrabel, i think he needs to do his due diligence and be careful before he takes this job or any other job because this is his second go round as head coach and you look at his coaching record 54 and uh, 45 in tennessee you know his second year there 2019 they played three playoff games they go 2 and 1 uh, his last two years, they were seven and ten, six and eleven, no playoff appearances. No you know, and so it's if when I look at that, my question to Mike Vrabel would be, you know, what would you do differently? What have you learned from Tennessee and, and to now? But again, I guess for me, I know a lot of the emphasis is on Andrew Berry and Kevin Stefanski, but 
I don't really feel confident about nothing within the Browns organization as long as Paul D. Podesta is tied to this organization because we might look at Mike Vrabel as a good football coach, a good football mind, a guy that can get the most out of the players available. But if he got to answer to Paul D. Podesta like everybody else, exactly how much is he going to be able to put his touch, his imprint on this Cleveland Browns team going forward? And so I think like it's more questions still to be asked. And Earl, to that exact point, do you know why Vrabel and Tennessee went their different ways? I the don't. Owner, the owner of Tennessee brought in a new GM, and Vrabel's like, I don't want to listen to that person. I want to have my own say in football decisions. And the owner chose the new GM, Ron Carthen, over Mike Vrabel. And then Mike Vrabel was like, okay, this ain't going to work. This is not how I want my football organization to be run. So he went this way. The Titans have gone this way. If he wasn't want to listen to a new guy brought in, I'm just not 100% sure he's going to want to listen to Paul D. Podesta or whoever's ahead of him that's already in place, knowing what has happened this season. And Vrabel's going to be like, this is, what, this is what you guys did, not me, you. And now you want me to buy into that? Like, not going to happen. Uh, it's too early to know exactly who the, the hottest coaching candidates on the market would be. I don't think there's any scenario where Stefanski, if he was going to get fired this week, G, it would have happened already. He's going to coach against the Steelers. They play on Thursday night, and then there's a mini buy after that. If they get smoked by the Steelers on what's supposed to be a disgusting 37-degree, wet, rainy, sloppy game in Cleveland, then on Friday morning we could be having a, uh, a very different discussion.